Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I don't know how you got here, but I do hope that you'll stay until the end because in this particular video, we are going to talk about circles. Now, what is a circle? A circle is a 2D shape that has no corners and no angles along its boundary. And it's formed when we connect an infinite amount of points that are all equidistant to a central point. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a bit confusing. But anyway, if you look on your screen here, we have what's called a circle. Now, if we were to create a line segment that starts from the center of the circle going to the outer to one of the points on the outer boundary of the circle, the distance of that line would be called a radius. Furthermore, if we were to take a point starting from the outside boundary of a circle and then go through the center of the circle and end on a point opposite side of the starting point of that line, then we would have a length that was called the diameter. Okay, so with that information, we can determine that the radius is simply two times, or the radius is equal to one half the diameter, and the diameter is equal to two times the radius. Okay, so are you with me so far? It's a lot of information, I know, but stick with me. So now let's get into the perimeter of the circle. So the distance of the perimeter of the circle is what we know as the circumference. So if we were to take all those points and just line them all up into a flat line, that distance is what we call the circumference. To find the circumference, we use the equation diameter times pi. Or we can also use the equation 2 radius, 2 times radius times pi because we know that the, the diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. Okay, so what exactly is pi now? Well, pi is a never-ending constant number, and to simply put it, uh, it is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. So what does that mean? Well, if we look at this next picture here, if we were to take the length of diameter and then use that length and wrap around the circumference as many times as we could, we would get this number 3.14159, so forth, so forth, so forth, so forth. And that number is called pi. And why is it a never ending number? It's because simply, uh, as I stated earlier, the circumference of a, or the circumference of a circle, yeah, <laughs> sorry, the circumference of the circle it consists of an infinite amount of points. So there's no way to determine when is the end of all of those points. So as you can see here in the picture, we have one length of the di diameter, two lengths of the diameter, three lengths of the diameter, and then the 0.14159, so forth, so forth, so forth, so forth, length of the diameter. So we can also prove that this length is correct because if we were uh, to take this portion, and if we times it by 7, which is seven 70 plus 28, it's 98. So 7. All of those will fit into this arc. And then this little portion here that doesn't fit, that's uh, since this is around roughly 0.98% of the line, this portion is somewhere little uh, less than 2% of the di diameter length. So I hope that kind of helps you understand how we come up with the number of pi. So moving on, uh, we can use these uh, variables to determine what is the area of a circle. Uh, the way we do that is, uh, the way we understand how to determine the area of the circle is actually if we create a different shape using the information that we know now. So we know that this length from the center all the way to a point on the boundary is the radius. And we know that the circumference is determined by using the equation uh, diameter times pi. So we also know that we can create uh, many different triangles because the, the, the boundary of a circle is created by an infinite amount of points, which we can use to manipulate the shape into another form. And in this next image, you'll see here that I have divided up the uh, circle into 40 triangles. We could do more, and to better understand this, we should do more, but I hope you understand that it's a bit of a challenge. So <laughs> I've just made it into 40 segments. That way we can at least work with uh, some sort of image in our head.
Now keep in mind that all of these triangles are all of equal size and each segment, uh, as you can see, kind of makes the end of the circle a bit more flatter, which is not what a normal circle would have, but uh, this is just for representation purposes. But if we were to rearrange all of these triangles to create a shape, then we can create what's called a parallelogram. Uh, we can also call it, uh, <clears throat> uh, if we were to uh, break up the triangles even more, we can get closer to our goal, which is a, tri uh, a rectangle. Sorry. Uh, the reason we want to reach the, the shape of a rectangle is because uh, to find the area of a rectangle, we need to multiply its length times its width. So we only need two variables. But using this parallelogram, at least we can see how it works. So like I've mentioned, the long end of this uh, triangle is actually equal to the radius because the this end right here is where the center of the circle used to be. And this end is a, a point along the side of its boundary, or al along the boundary. So that is equal to the radius. So now we have uh, one side of this, this shape. The second shape, uh, if you remember, both of these lengths is equal to diameter times pi, because that's how we find the circumference. And we know that we can divide it by two, so we'll have one half diameter times pi, and half of diameter, half of the diameter is equal to the radius. So what happens now is we have, um, we have a length and a width that we can multiply to get the area of this shape, and that equation becomes uh, pi r squared because how we break it down is pi r right here, pi r times r, put it together, pi r squared. So anyway. Uh, I know it's a bit confusing, but I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you have any, you know, remarks, you can also comment down below. I'm always open to criticisms. But yeah, I hope you guys always take care, and I hope we can always better ourselves. And until next time, bye-bye.